Hello everyone, my name is Paul Kanyuk and I'm going to be showing you guys a very uh, basic demo on how to do shading and lighting in Katana. Uh, this part of the demonstration will be simple scene setup and lighting and I'll be having another video on how to do the shading which is what I find most fun. Alright, so let's start by opening up the directory where we're going to be working. I like to have some blank Katana files hanging around and I just copy that and give it the name of the project. Um, you can open up Katana just from the desktop link, but I kind of like starting this way because um, everything in Katana is relative to where the file is located. So it's really important to make sure the file is somewhere where you really want it to be because all the paths will be relative to that. So I'll just call it Still Life Demo A. Um, as the name suggests, we'll be doing a Still Life. And by Still Life, I'm being generous. I mean, we're going to be creating a few spheres for some oranges. A Taurus for a plate and a Taurus for a table. So that's where we're going. Uh, this is the kind of scene you can create in Katana alone. All right, so let's start by creating some objects in this file. I'm going to hit tab and then type primitive create. This is not something you normally do. Normally we bring in geometry from Maya or Houdini using Alembic or USD. But in this case, uh, we're going to do this all within Katana. So I'm going to call this first primitive, which I'll make it a sphere. I'll call it orange A. Orange you glad I named it that. All right, and then also, it's a good idea to name your nodes. I like to take the name like primitive create, just write, do the first two letters of it, PC, and then uh, type something like, you know, PC orange A. Um, this might seem silly, but later on, you really want to make sure that you have things named correct. All right, so let's uh, double click on this. So we view it, the scene graph at that location. And if we go to the viewer, there it is. Um, if we collapse the scene graph, it's gone, but if we expand it, we see a lovely little sphere at the origin. All right, that'll be our first orange. Um, now let's uh, maybe put it on a plate. So let's uh, do another primitive create. Uh, this one, let's make it a torus. PC torus plate, first torus of the scene. And uh, to have these both exist in the scene at the same time, we're going to create a merge node. And we're going to connect both the orange and the torus to the merge node. And now we have them both in the scene at the same time. All right, let's do some high-end high, high -end modeling here. Let's turn this into a plate, maybe by scaling this uh, by 2 along the uh, x and z axes and along y. Maybe let's flatten the plate, 0.2, make it really flat. Maybe just raise it up off the uh, ground a little bit. And now let's uh, maybe put a few oranges on this plate. So this uh, first orange right here, eh, maybe let's make this a little bigger. I know, very high tech modeling here. Uh, and let's raise it up probably by the height we did or half that. Cool. All right, so we have one orange on the plate. Uh, maybe let's create a few more of them. Create another orange, make this one orange B. Uh, definitely make sure to put it in the world at a different location, otherwise you'll get a collision and you'll just get the same orange. So give each one a unique name, merge that in. And as for this orange, um, I'll make that one a little smaller, back to zero, back to just one scale. And let's maybe translate it out a little bit. Um, more there we go um, and maybe in the z-axis bring it forward a little bit too cool and also let's uh, rotate this just you know so that the oranges are a little a little more natural looking type some random numbers 20 20 how about 20 awesome I like negative 20 maybe uh, nah 20 is better All right, cool, and maybe one more orange, orange C. And uh, again, let's try to keep your node and the scene graph name identical. It doesn't That's not necessary, but I'll just make things less confusing. And this orange, um, let's uh, move it in the other direction. So negative one there, cool. Um, there, maybe, uh, 
What axis is that? Maybe one. Nope. Other axis. Cool. And then maybe negate something. Now, this is really boring watching someone model in Katana, but uh, I don't know. This, I'm just trying to do something really quick so that we have a scene to shade. And this guy, I'm just going to push it back along the Z axis a little. And cool. All right, let that be our still life. Oh, uh, maybe uh, this guy right here, make it a little smaller, make it interesting. Cool, all right, so we have three oranges of different sizes on a plate, and maybe let's put it on a table. So I'm gonna create one more torus. Oh, looks like that torus we left named primitive. I'm gonna call it a uh, plate, and this one I will call table. All right, and let's rename the primitive create node to table and connect it into our merge node. And then I'm going to uh, make it even bigger. Five. Uh, probably not the height. <laughs> uh, maybe make that pretty small. Uh, I don't know, it could be a little bigger, uh, but let's just make sure to move it down a little. Maybe a little lower, negative 0 0.1. Cool. All right, uh, that looks like a pretty good scene. Um, now let's go ahead and create a camera and uh, maybe put some lights in there and see if we can render that. So uh, to create a camera, do a camera create node. Uh, again, following that convention, I'll just call it CC. I'll just call it main cam. Um, we can leave the name camera. There'll only be one here. For, ah, actually, now let's let's be fancy about it. Main cam. All right, let's uh, add that to the merge node, and then let's create a render settings node, which is where we'll set what camera we're gonna render from. And um, I'll just call that, uh, well, you could either remember the name you typed, or you can just take that and drag that in here. Um, clicking and dragging can be just as efficient. Resolution, 512, sounds fine. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want for your real projects. Um, and then finally, let's um, let's make sure to do a render global nodes. Um, note, I am using RenderMan for Katana. Um, I should have clarified at the beginning. So we're all the nodes are going to use have PR Man in the front. So PR Man global statements, those will be our major render settings. Then finally, I think we just create a render node, which is the node that we're going to render from. Uh, before we render, we probably want to have uh, materials on these objects as well as a light in the scene. So let's go ahead and create a very simple material. Um, note, I never get simpler than a network material. Uh, I know you could use a regular material node, but I, I prefer these because I just don't want to change it later. And almost anything interesting has some nodes in it. So we're going to use a network material node. And I'm going to call this... Um, default material and or mater uh, character we all know and love but now uh, we're going to call this nm underscore defaults or just def and let's go ahead and create a PR man uh, shading node um, oh before we do that we need to make sure we add a terminal a bxdf terminal to the network material and let's go ahead and find a bxdf um, Let's just use, um, for very simple scenes, uh, the PXR Disney is kind of fun. We're going to move on to PXR Surface later, but this one just kind of looks okay by default. So let's throw that one in and I'll just call that one P PSN uh, uh, Disney Surf. Cool. And then let's uh, click on the out and connect it to the, uh, the BXDF input. And uh, we are, will merge this material into the scene as well. Now we need to assign it. Material assign. Drop that in. I'll just call that MA def. And let's go ahead and find our material, network material. Uh, we put that under what material we want to assign. Where do you want to assign it to? Let's view the scene back at the render node. And uh, let's just assign it to all of Geo. And everything will get that. Um, but before we can render that, we're going to need some light sources. So I'm going to go ahead and create a gaffer three node. 
I'll put that somewhere between render settings and the material apply. Uh, Gaffer 3 is the latest and greatest in Gaffers. The other Gaffer node is the older one from the first version of Katana. We are in Katana 2.5 here. I'm going to go ahead and add um, a PXR dome light. And then we're going to, eh, we should probably assign a, uh, <laughs> a texture to it, but let's just make sure we can render. Um, also, I'm going to make it visible on camera just to make sure we know it's there. And in theory, that's enough to start a render. Fingers crossed. I'm going to right click. Uh, start it. Well, before we do that, make sure you add a monitor. You need somewhere to see the render. Then right click and go to preview render. Uh, you'll see a render will start in the catalog and we can middle drag that down here and see. Well, what do we get? Well, one thing I can see, we don't have the, um, the incremental render mode on. So we're going scan line by scan line at full samples, which is uh, not how you want to iterate. So this is going to be a very boring render. Yay, we have a color. Something happened. Oh, uh, here, here's something you got to watch out for. Um, I was just assuming that, oh, perspective cam, that's my camera. No, we're rendering from the wrong camera. So that camera was likely inside the spheres. So let's go ahead and change that to main cam. And sure enough, yeah, that's what we're seeing. All right, let's actually pose main cam in an interesting way. I want to see all three of my... Where'd my third orange go? Well, we'll figure that out later. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and frame these. Um, orange A and B. Oh, it looks like uh, somehow when I connected something to the merge, I accidentally connected it to one of the input rather than that little arrow there, which kicked it off. So if we put that back in, yay, we have our sphere back. All right, cool. Uh, let's maybe, all right, this will be our still life. And while we're at it, I, I think orange A could be bigger. It's a little more contrast. A little bigger. The guys are like, oh my God, if I watch you model any more by like typing in scalar values, I'm gonna go insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is not the real way to use Katana, but honestly, for just like doing a quick demo and for testing out shaders, this is, I, I, I kind of do this all the time. All right, cool. Uh, that will be my perfect still life. Oh, and before we uh, wait for that um, scan line rendering to go again, or basically, you know, one line at a time, uh, let's go to render globals and then let's dig around to see where the name incremental is. Is it under hider? Yes, it is. Under hider, incremental is set to no. Uh, make it yes. What that will do is uh, basically refine um, all the buckets at once as much as it can. So what this will do is look more like what you're used to in most renderers where it's refining the more it renders. So you see feedback instantaneously and then it goes from there. So great, we've got some spheres on a plate, on a table with a white light. Um, let's uh, go ahead and replace the background with a more pleasing looking image. So I'm gonna cancel that render and let's go to our gaffer three. Um, go to the material. Well, make sure you have your dome light selected. Then under material, there is an option for a color map. Now, um, I'd like everyone to be able to do this demo without needing any assets um, other than just Katana and RenderMan. So let's go ahead and find an environment map that comes with RenderMan. So RenderMan usually is installed under program files, Pixar, um, it looks like we're up to 21.4 in this demo. Um, and probably under library, RenderMan asset library, environment maps. Uh, we got indoor and outdoor. Let's do outdoor. Uh, Luxo Jr. Sounds good. And let's grab that texture. And let's go do a preview render and see if we get anything colorful. Oh, and check it out. It's where I work. Uh, this is actually a uh, Pixar's campus where the this uh, light probe data was taken from. I think Christoph Harry is responsible for this. Um, all right, that looks great, but um, I kind of want to play around a little, pick the right bit of the background I want to use. Um, so what I'm going to do is 
cancel this and right now what I've been doing is hitting right click preview render which um, is not interactive it starts really quickly uh, but you can't change anything while the render is going what we can do is do a live render now to move the camera and the lights around to get just the right look so to make something live in a live render um, you in in the scene graph you go to this column right here for live and let's go ahead and find our dome light make that live uh, we could, I don't really want to make the material live right now. I'm actually not sure if this will work. I'll make the main cam live, but uh, I'm mostly focused on the dome light. So um, let's go ahead, right click and go to live render. And then we could drag that in here. Note with one and two, you can switch between them. So you can kind of AB things. So hopefully in a sec, we'll start seeing some pixels. Live render always has a little bit more of a startup cost. Um, so going to our dome light, uh, let's go ahead under the object and see if we can maybe rotate this a bit. See what happens. Ooh, that's looking nice. Let's keep going. Oh yeah, I like the, the, the group of trees there is great. It's actually the best place on campus if you want to make a, um, you know, get some privacy while you take a call. So yeah, I love that grove back there. So let's let's keep rotating around. Oh, that's pretty. Cool. And one nice thing you can see here, actually, the uh, shadows in the environment map match the shadows. So we're doing correct image-based lighting. Good job, Christoph, setting this up. It's clear I've got to raise that sphere, but uh, this will be the starting point for our um, shading demo. So I'm going to stop that live render. I'm going to save this file. And this is our node graph. So just to review, I just did a bunch of primitive creates, set some translates, rotates, and scales, merged them together, created a network material, added a BXDF terminal, created a Pixar shading node, um, oh, sorry, PR man shading node, put a, just a regular generic PXR Disney in there, material assigned it, created a gaffer, added a dome light, set an environment map, Render settings, I just pointed to the main cam. In PR Man Global settings, I changed incremental to yes, and then I just rendered from render. Um, this is kind of your most basic katana scene right here. Environment map, bunch of prims and some materials. But uh, for doing ex uh, look development and experimentating, experimentating, experimenting with shaders, uh, procedural shading in particular, um, it's good to have a really simple scene like this just to test around with before maybe you go to your larger scenes you might bring in via Alembic. So uh, next part of the demo, we're going to shade the still life. I'm going to stop the recording and I'll uh, see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.